delighted to be sitting here with Dorothy Lee. Dorothy is the head of Ganeshe, uh, which is an organization we're going to actually explore in this interview. And so I, I won't uh, spoil any of the things that Dorothy and I are about to talk about. Uh, but this is, I'm thrilled to have you joining us for our Giants in L&D series, Dorothy. And uh, so thank you. Thank you. So Dorothy, why don't we start with a, a little bit about your background. Uh, how did you get your start and, uh, and reach the point where you are today? Thank you very much. So I started to work in training, learning, um, when I was uh, younger, when I was 26, I started to work for a French NGO and we were supporting African countries to uh, build the capacity of the health workforce and more particularly in the immunization program. So we started, I think, maybe 1994. Uh, we were just thinking about how we could build the capacity of these people regarding um, you know, disease surveillance, how to deal with epidemics, outbreaks, and so on. So we started to create some kind of training based on the existing model from the CDC, US CDC at this time. So the CDC, US CDC developed a training program, face-to-face uh, -face training course uh, on this topic in France. So we exported the model from France to adapt to the, the African culture and practices and uh, systems. So this, that was the first you know, contact I had with this, um, with this, uh, with the training. So I was not supposed to be a training specialist at this time. I was supposed to be a business uh, somewhere because I graduated from the business administration and uh, then specialized in human resources management. So I was supposed to work in big companies, you know, something like this. But finally, I, I was very, very attracted by the non-profit uh, organization. So I joined this uh, French NGO and I worked for this French NGO for over almost 20 years. <laughs> and I grew up in this, in this organization actually. So, so this and, is my background. And you are currently with Ganesh. What is Ganesh? So thank you, Ganesh. Uh, so when I when I left uh, this French NGO, I decided to stay in um, in Vietnam because I used to live in Africa. Then I moved to to Asia, to Vietnam, and um, uh, we decided with the former staff of this NGO in Asia to create uh, a non-profit consulting team. The idea was to continue uh, the operation of uh, this NGO, which decided, which decided to move back to Africa to continue the activities of uh, you know, developing training programs, building capacity, so strengthening the health systems and so on. So we decided with the same team to establish Ganeshi, uh, which is a non-profit organization, and we're focusing on health and immunization system strengthening with a big component around uh, leadership and governance, uh, capacity building and learning in the health uh, sector, public health sector. And, um, and in from the 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 uh, home base in Vietnam, a lot of your work is still in Africa. It's Absolutely. Southeast Asia and, and so forth. Sure, yes, still. So we are operating in, uh, in Asia, in Southeast Asia mostly, but uh, we have maybe 80% of our uh, activities in Africa, in uh, Western Central Africa. And what is your role? Uh, oh, um, I have a technical role, which is health system strengthening expert. So I work with government to in, in trying to find some new ideas or optimize IT for improving the health services, the health service delivery um, with different mechanisms. So we are really working on, on innovation, I would say. Not only you know the novelty itself, but also how to create need-based innovation, how to scale up the innovation and make it sustain with a continuous vision of incorporating it to the system and also uh, building the capacity of, uh, 
of the people to, to really maintain or adapt the innovation from time to time. And this uh, must require quite a significant learning function. And so uh, as you go through this process, you do quite a bit of design, your team does. You, your team does quite a bit of instructional design, your team does quite a bit of facilitation. Um, you're doing e-learning. Um, I saw on, on the, the new website, which everyone should go to, uh, that you're doing some micro learning work. Um, one of your colleagues built a beautiful board game. Um, and so there's a very significant learning and development component to the work you do. From your perspective, then, what is one area of research that all LD practitioners should be aware of or should incorporate into the work they do? What's most important? What should, what should be the highlight of the work they do? they should focus on? Yeah, thank you. I think it's a critical question that you raised now. Um, probably we can develop very sophisticated, very nice uh, training system or training products or training services. Um, however, we, we are never super sure that it will address the problem, that uh, it would be also something that will fit with the training needs, for example. So in my opinion, one, one critical uh, area of research is being able to conduct some rapid you know, analysis of what is really need. Is it really a training solution that is required or is it much more like organization or reorganization or something like that? It's true that looking at the learning perspective, I think that the, the capacity of analyzing a request or a demand is very, very important. So training need analysis is probably uh, critical before doing anything. You have spent a, a large part of your career talking about data statistics. Yes. And uh, sure. what kind of role does statistical analysis play in the learning uh, uh, data collection? There are many, many uh, actually type of indicators or data that should be collected by any specialist of learning. You know, uh, even before developing any uh, training program, you want to be able to measure the effectiveness or uh, the capacity of this training to change the capacity competencies, even the quality of any services. So in this case, if you have this statistical analytic uh, mindset, it's easier for you to measure well, from like a baseline, you can do the baseline study, you measure the level of knowledge, for example, or the knowledge, the level of competencies, and you are capable to measure how far from the beginning and after the training or training program, how far the, the, the training could impact, not only on the knowledge, but maybe on the way to the behavior, the way, the confidence also <laughs> of being capable to do something to perform, for example, is very important. So being able to demonstrate this with some data, so we have different type of data. We have quantitative data, we have qualitative data. And so we should be able to, um, to play with the various uh, type of data and even defining with the with the learners or even with the organization requesting for this learning program to define the KPI, key performance indicator. How are we going to measure the effectiveness or the return on investment on this training? So I think that this is very, very um, crucial. And even like an iterative cycle, because you have to measure from time to time and adapt your learning system. Uh, because the, 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 I think knowledge and competency needs are always evolving also. So it's like being capable to really make sure that we are still fitting with the requirements. What are some of the factors that one should consider when collecting data? And, and what, what is the significance of good data collection? So we are no more talking about the learning, right? We are talking about uh, statistical data for decision making in health, right? Yeah. So um, looking at this specific aspect, currently uh, it's true that uh, there is a big issue regarding the data quality and use in the 
public health sector. If you go at country level, in, and more particularly in uh, uh, low-income countries, you will see that, for example, the you will have the tool, the system, information system is in place. Everything is uh, ready for you to collect the data. But the main point is that the data should, is supposed to be collected by the clinical people. So they have competition between saving lives, treating people, vaccinating, etc. And they have to fill in so many forms, so many documents. And sometimes they just don't have time. You can imagine, for example, a, a nurse or a medical doctor in charge of you know, saving lives every day. They have to allocate 40% of their time every day to fill in forms, which is really, really difficult. So I think that probably there is a, there is there are there are many, many factors that can impact on the quality of the data. And it's not only a tool thing, or maybe it's an organizational thing, but most of the time we see it's or the 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 psychology also factor is very important. So when people are not really, um, I mean, interested in data or they don't understand the impact of data at their level, then they will not pay attention on that. So this is very, very challenging. Probably yeah. it's a good idea, Matthew, for you to be thinking about how we can develop more coaching program or training program on you know, data use, data quality, why is it important? And not only for the people, I would say, but also with the manager to understand that this is not acceptable either to overload <laughs> so many responsibility on, uh, on clinical uh, people, medical doctor and nurses. Dorothy, uh, uh, do you have any final pieces of advice for people in interested in a career in learning and development? Uh, sure. I think it's a it's it's a very very uh, uh, I would say rich uh, job. I would say it's you never get bored. So what I would recommend is really continue continuing learning again and again to be able to really uh, give back to your learners. I think it's very important. Wonderful, wonderful, Dorothy. Thank you so much. Where can people thank find you? you? Uh, what's the website? So it's www.ganeshay.com. Great, great, super. So come and join us. We are looking for new innovators. And you are one of our uh, very senior advisor at Ganeshay, and we are very proud having you. I'm sure we are going to co-create, co-design new solutions, new ideas, and new new solutions for saving more lives together. So I'm very happy to have you. It's an honor. Matthew, this is a, fantastic. It's an honor. So I'm very excited to be affiliated with you and Ganesh. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Matthew. Bye.